Okay, let's talk about functions. By saying function, do I mean methods? No, just accept this functions are not methods that we use in object oriented programming. Because methods are some programming units that are bound to a class or an object instance, but functions are independent objects that may refer independently or may be invoked independently. So they are different things, repeat after me, function is not method. Even if we use them interchangeably, since we have an object-oriented background, they are totally different things. Okay? Methods that are in object-oriented programming are not independent program units. As you know, uh, to define a method, we first need a class. Okay? And these methods are bound to a class statically or to an object instance so if you want to invoke a method you need to refer to an object instance or the class uh, scope at first and then you may invoke this method okay but in functional programming you may directly refer to a function and you may directly invoke it you don't need any other object instance or class instance Methods may depend upon values other than its arguments. So a method may use an object instance's attributes, but functions do not depend on external variables, external values other than their arguments. If you need to pass some values to functions, you may uh, pass them only as arguments, but functions cannot use external values. This is important. Methods may change the values of its arguments and even the external values, but functions, pure functions, cannot change neither its arguments nor the external values. This is called as side effects in functional programming and is not a desired behavior. Functions cannot change uh, the values of its arguments or external values. It may only use these arguments to construct a brand new object. It's so important. So to summarize, what is a function? Function lives independently. It does not need an object instance or class scope to live. Okay? And it does not depend to any, any external value other than its arguments. And a function may output only one value. Other than that, it cannot change any value. This modification is called as side effect and we don't want side effects in pure functional programming. Even if uh, we may change them inside Java 8, uh, in functional programming you should not do that. Since we are in between functional programming and object-oriented programming, some rules may not be applied so strictly, okay? The other important thing is that functions may return other functions as output. This is so important. As you know, in object-oriented programming, uh, a method may return only one value and it must be an object instance or a primitive but in functional programming a function may return any other function to go on processing okay and functions may be composed together regardless of the context in functional programming wherever you define a function you may chain them to construct a bigger function but in object oriented programming uh, you cannot uh, refer to functions independently so you cannot compose them. Functional programming is based upon pure functions that I've defined you here. Okay? Functions exist independently, they are not bound to object instances or classes, and functions cannot change the values of any object. They only may copy an object modify the copy and return it, but they cannot change the original value, original object's values. That's why all values are immutable and functional programming hates 
mutability. In the next video, we will talk why we hate it. Okay? And functional programming uses recursion and not iteration. So, in functional programming, there is no for loop, while loop, and counters. Okay? All of the things are done by recursion. Since understanding uh, the recursive code is uh, hard, understanding the functional programming is also hard. It is not a child toy, but it is not a rocket science. Throughout the course, we will understand the principles of functional programming. In next video, I will explain why we prevent mutability of object states.